This is the guide to the EC252 exercises setup guide. Exercises assignment, the same thing. And there is a written form of this exercises.pdf in the uh, GitHub repository if you need it. Now, all of our exercises are designed uh, and set up to be run using the ECE Ubuntu servers. Uh, and although you can test and develop the code on your own laptop, uh, core staff will only be able to support you running on ECE Ubuntu. So if you're having some problem on your laptop, there's missing libraries or something doesn't compile or anything like that, the first thing that we would tell you is try using it uh, on the ECE servers. Uh, now, preferably in advance of the first actual assignment or exercise for the term, you want to do the following things. And the first thing is set up your GitLab account. GitLab is web-based software for managing source control repositories, and the university offers this as a service at git.uwaterloo.ca. Uh, and once you navigate there, you will be presented with this login screen where you uh, log in with your usual university credentials. Uh, so we'll log in. Uh, if you have not logged in before uh, and you haven't set up your account, then you definitely need to do that. Uh, most importantly is you need to configure your SSH keys. So click on the avatar at the top uh, and click on settings uh, and then select SSH keys in the menu. On this page, uh, you will be given instructions here at the top about how to add your SSH key. If you already have an existing one, then you can follow this link here to the existing one. Uh, if not, then you can follow the link here to generate one. Uh, and once you've generated it, you paste it into the box here, uh, and then you can add it uh, to your account here using add key. To test whether you are able to successfully log in to the correct server, there's two ways to go about it. The first way is if you have your VPN on. Most of the ECE servers are not reachable from outside the firewall, so you get inside the firewall using the VPN. Uh, if, however, you don't want to do that or you can't for some reason, then you can connect to the ECE term server and from there to the server of your choice. So I will SSH my user ID at ecterm.uwaterloo.ca. This will prompt me for my password. This is, again, your standard uh, single sign-on credentials. Uh, and from here, you will then SSH to ecubuntu. Again, you will need to enter your password. Uh, and then you are on the correct server. You'll notice uh, at the bottom uh, where it says the host name here, it's ECE Tesla Zero. There are a number of different ECE servers. Uh, and if you just SSH to ECE Ubuntu, it connects you to any one of them. Uh, and they should all be equally valid for completing the assignments as required. That is, of course, the workflow for if you are using Linux or Mac OS. If you are using Windows 10, my recommendation is that you install the Windows subsystem for Linux, or the WSL, uh, and the instructions are linked in the exercises setup guide. It takes you to a page like this, uh, where you just specify the distribution of your choice. We recommend Ubuntu for this purpose, uh, and that allows you to very easily launch a Linux terminal and just connect using all of the standard commands. Uh, you can also use a third-party client such as PuTTY or MOBA Xterm or something like that. Um, for space reasons and time reasons, we're not going to go into the full details of how to configure those. They don't come with my recommendation, but they are a valid option uh, if you wanted to do that. Uh, for transferring files, whether it's on Mac, Linux, or some other operating system, you can use uh, SFTP. This is SSH File Transfer Protocol or Secure File Transfer Protocol. Uh, but if you do all the exercises just simply on EC Ubuntu, then you don't have to move files. Uh, you can also map your drive uh, and uh, your drive being the uh, files that are stored uh, on the Unix systems uh, at the university. Uh, so you can access them like it's a standard folder. Uh, that is something that comes with my recommendation. The final step to set up is just to test out forking the repository. Uh, and you can search for the fork practice project uh, in my personal space. Uh, and you can then click on the fork button uh, up here at the top. Uh, this 
creates a copy of the project. It allows you to make your changes without affecting the original project. Uh, and when you do select fork, uh, you'll be presented with a bunch of spaces in which you want to fork it. Uh, and you should choose your personal space. It is likely for you it is the only one available. Uh, it takes a moment, but you'll get a message that says it was successfully forked. Uh, and at that point, uh, you want to update the security settings so that nobody else except the course instructor uh, can see your repository. So if you go to settings uh, of your new project uh, and you choose general here, you want to first of all uh, go down to the part where it's, uh, it says permissions uh, and click on expand uh, and you want to set your project visibility here to be private. Uh, and uh, once you have done that you need to actually add under members your course instructor as a maintainer. You will see, of course, your own name here uh, under existing members and groups. Uh, but search for the marking TA to add, uh, and for role permission, choose maintainer, uh, and then you are done. Uh, this is important. Uh, if you don't set it to private, other people will be able to see your code. You don't want that. Uh, but it, also, if you don't add your instructor to the uh, list of people who are allowed to view it, uh, then they can't mark it and you won't get marks for that assignment. The last thing to do in terms of getting set up is to learn a little bit about Git if you don't know already. Uh, linked here is a uh, Git a book which gives you uh, some information about what you need to actually uh, use it. Uh, some of the things are much more advanced than we want to talk about. We will probably not talk about branches or anything like that uh, because it's not really necessary for actually doing the assignments that you need to do. However, it does give you a nice overview of what uh, Git is about and how to do things. And if you have questions about, oh, you know, how, how do I record changes or how do I undo something? Thing, uh, or anything like that, then this reference is quite handy. If all of that seems like too much reading to you, you should read it, but if it seems like too much reading to you, then I'll give you the very quick quick start guide for what you actually need to do. Uh, so first thing is you need to set up your git on uh, the EC server. So we're going to do git config global user.name and then of course your name instead of mine. Quotation marks are important. And your email. Once again, yours instead of mine. Uh, and then you've got that set up. Uh, now to actually work with a repository, you need to clone it. So to actually clone it, uh, if you look in GitLab at the repository that you want to clone, uh, then you select here at the top right the clone button, uh, and you want clone with SSH. And you can click on copy URL, which will then copy the URL that you need to the clipboard. Now, you should make sure that you've actually copied the one from your repository and not the one from the course instructor. Otherwise, you won't be able to submit your changes. Uh, and you can verify that uh, by git clone and then paste the URL that you are looking for. You should, of course, see your own name here uh, in this because it should be in your personal space. Uh, this example shows here uh, in the space ECE252 because I'm just using it as an example. Uh, and you will click on clone. Now, if you have set a password for your SSH key, you'll have to enter it. If you did not, then this step will not appear, and that's not bad. It's just normal. Uh, if this doesn't go well, it's probably a problem with setting up of your SSH key. Uh, if, it, if it needs to be checked, then you should fix that at this point. Otherwise, you can't successfully clone it. Uh, if, however, you do get this output that shows here, it, you, it means you have successfully uh, cloned that code. Uh, and so then we will enter into that repository. Uh, and while we're here, uh, you can see what the files are. There are a number of different files, uh, and you're ready to start working on it. So open the code in your editor uh, and get going. Now, when you have uh, made some changes, I'll just add an irrelevant comment here. So there are some changes that we can see. Uh, you can see what changes have been made with both git status and git diff. Git status tells you what files have been changed. Git diff 
shows you the actual changes that have occurred in those files. When you are ready to submit your changes, you can use git add and then the name of the file that you have changed such that uh, it is added to the next commit. Uh, commit is a package of changes uh, that you are going to uh, put together. Uh, and when you're ready, you use git commit. Uh, and git commit opens up your editor once again uh, and it asks you to give a commit message as well as shows you what changes are being committed as in what files are being changed so you then uh, this is a meaningful commit message uh, and when you are done with your editor your commit is finished that's However, just for now on your local machine in this local directory, if you actually want to submit those changes, then you use the command git push. Uh, and git push then transfers those changes in your commits to the GitLab server. Uh, you need to remember to do that uh, because otherwise we don't see them as the core staff who are going to evaluate it. Uh, if you have uh, modified anything since your last commit that's not included when you git push, uh, only actual commits have been, uh, have been sent using git push, so make sure to do that. Uh, and the code that you have been provided here comes with a make file. Uh, the make file is used to tell the make command what to do, how to build the code, so you don't have to actually invoke the compiler directly. All you do is type make, uh, and you will see some output there where it actually then generates the uh, generates the commands that are needed to compile your code uh, and it generates an executable file. Uh, you will notice now if we look at the contents of the directory there is a new file here uh, this one is called arrow uh, and that is the executable file. Uh, if there are no errors if there are errors then you will see error output and it will tell you what went wrong so you need to fix that um, before you move on if you see warnings that doesn't prevent generation of the executable file but you should look at them uh, and they might tell you something useful so you should pay attention to them and you should uh, resolve them if you can uh, if you're having trouble with a particular error then the internet of course will help you out with that uh, if you actually want to run the code, then you use the dot slash prefix. Uh, this means you explicitly want to run the executable file in this directory, uh, and that's what you do. So then you will see some output, uh, and uh, the output uh, of this program is incomplete because uh, the exercise in question is not finished, uh, and you can kill its execution if you think it's stuck with the control C command. Uh, if your program takes arguments, then they follow on the same line, so uh, uh, arg1, arg2. Uh, if it takes input like that, uh, some programs take uh, argument like you know, minus T4, uh, where minus T has some meaning within that program, such as create four threads, uh, and uh, a second argument minus I input file dot txt. Uh, and that is how you would actually execute the program. Uh, and so when you are ready, you can edit your code, you can test it out uh, after building it with make, uh, and if you're happy with it, you commit uh, and then push those changes. And that's the basic workflow for how you complete an exercise.